This, this is Gerard TV. Hi, my name is Jerome Hudson. And Jay Kieran. And Julian Roberto. And welcome to UR TV. Learning the many ways we can find out about things was another good reason why a visit to our local town library was very worthwhile. Librarian Alice took us for a walk around the library. They can read here, they can take books home. We've also got a cinema area there which we'll walk past as well. <laughs> There are so many things we can do from finding books and magazines using the internet. Hi, my name is Roy. I come from Tea Tree. And we're just here at Alice Spring Libraries learning how to use the Spring Library. Another great thing to remember is it's nice and cool. One thing we discovered was how popular the year are yearbooks. Uh, especially the government era ones called Malapa. Thinking about how to make things, especially food, is something we all enjoy doing. Making milkshakes is always lots of fun. Last term, one of our year nine classes worked hard to make a story about something we all feel very strongly about. Bilbies are endangered. In our math class, we use statistics to show what is happening over a couple of days. We recorded in our studios this story to show how urgent things have become and to submit for a national choose math competition. People are not aware of the threats facing native animals in the wild. Many unique animals have already become extinct and others are on their way out. Here in the Northern Territory, we are very worried about the bilby, rabbit-eared bandicoot. Bilby is very important animal in Aboriginal culture and it is used to be very common. But now there are less than 1,000 left in the wild. We need to convince the government that bilbies are in urgent need of help. What's causing this decline in bilby numbers? We know feral cats and foxes kill and eat bilbies. Also, introduced buffalo grasses and climate change are producing hot, uncontrolled fires. After a big fire, bilbies have nowhere to hide and cats and fox kill them. We need more indigenous rangers on country to help control fire and trap feral cats. We can craft the decline in the bilbies population to show what is happening. A graph is a powerful way to get a message. This graph shows how bilbies numbers has declined since 1980. There are now less than 1,000 left in the wild. And we can also estimate what the population will be in years to come. We can use a formula to estimate the numbers in the future and in the case we can extend the population line on the graph. This will grab people's attention. Bilbies could be extinct quite soon. That's extrapolation and it's predicting the future. But no one can really know what will happen. Will people take our numbers seriously? We can strengthen our instrument. We can look at the underlying causes of bilbies decline. If they continue or become more serious, then our estimate will be more believable. So what are feral cat and fox numbers doing? The numbers of cats are steady in some places and increasing in others. Nowhere is there a decline. What about the hot fires? Are there more or less of them? Large hot fires where bilbies live are definitely on the increase. 
Buffalo is spreading further into the desert habitat of the Bilby and we are getting record temperatures probably due to climate change so there is a buildup of dry fuel followed by devastating fires. So the causes of Bilby decline are getting worse than before. That supports our estimate of Bilby numbers in the future so people can learn about the danger of extension. Our estimates are backed up by good maps. Maps can help us save the bilbies and other endangered animals. Maps make everything, everything possible. While we didn't win, Central Land Council will be using our video for their ranger network and our rescue the organization that protect bilbies is doing the same. This week a few of our senior fellows went out with Clontarf thinking about a job. 130 kilometers west of Alice Springs you will find beautiful Glen Helen Lodge. It is a popular tourist destination with many employment opportunities. We meet up with manager Chris Charson, who took us for a tour around the lodge. Ricardo Brody, Ethan Reeve, Jesse Butler and Alec Wilson asked quite a few questions. One thing was how the staff members change between winter and summer. Winter is the peak time where they need more staff. The guys could work for a couple of months, then go back home for the summer. It's almost like school terms. On Tuesday, Foundation students travel into town to, the, to take part in a painting workshop at Watch the Space and Artist Studio and Gallery in town. Student learned the art of screen printing using water-based paints. They spent some time drawing inspiration from a range of books and then experimented with the painting techniques using high-quality artists, paint and paper. They produced two prints from the original painting. The second, a ghost print, will be featured in a major expedition and co collaboration with other schools in town. Stay tuned for the final expedition. So that's another great URTV TV episode. Make sure you come back next Friday to find out what we have been up to. Don't, Don't forget, forget to, to follow, follow us on our, our Facebook page and, and subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Bye! Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hey. Oh.